Greetings, faithful followers. Uh, this is your old pal, Brother Jack Angry, coming to you live from the Monastery of Mayhem, deep in the bowels of Omaha, Nebraska, bringing you another edition of Movie Night Live from the Monastery of Mayhem and the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. I'm Brother Jack Angry, and with me is no one. Nope, couldn't get anybody again this week. You know what? I gotta start. I gotta start hiring me a scheduling department because I need to get these bums in here. You know, it's like Inferno needs to have her. You know, lovely little ass parked right next to me. I need to have it, Lady Torrid on the other side. I need to have Dahlia here. I need to have Brother James here. You know, I know you're not paying to see me talk or to see me and listen to me talk for 30 minutes a night here on KPAO, but. You know what? It's better than the hack, so, you know, count yourselves lucky. And who the hell is around on Saturday night at midnight watching TV anyway? Certainly not anyone with a life. But Saturday mornings at 1 a.m., it's where all the cool people meet to watch this show. I know you do. I get stopped when I'm in Walmart. Hey, Brother Jack, we love your show. I mean, aren't you guys on public television? Um, where's the girls at? We'd like a picture of Inferna, you know, and we don't mind doing that for our fans. We love it. You know, if you want to autograph picture of the girls, Inferna, Ash, uh, we'll see if we have some pictures of Gulia. We'll get some pictures made of Dahlia and Torrid and, you know, that's coming. Um, you want those pictures? Write to us at theangrybros at gmail.com. And again, that's theangrybros at gmail.com, and you will see that at the end of the uh, show in the credits, along with our uh, link to Brother James's uh, GoFundMe campaign so he can get his teeth fixed, and uh, address for our Cafe Press swag site. If you want Inferno merchandise, you want Lady Torrid merchandise, you want Angry Brothers merchandise, mugs, glasses, uh, posters, rings, jewelries, mouse pads, car flags, bumper stickers, you name it, we got it, you know. If you can think of it and we can stick our face on it, you can bet your ass that it's there. If not, you write us and tell us what you want, we'll put it there for you. You know, like I said, we do, every, we do it all for our fans and we love doing it. Now tonight's movie is from 1966. It's the um, little scene, you know, you know, well, fairly well known piece called The Queen of Blood, and it stars John Saxon, Dennis Hopper, Victoria Marley, or possibly Virginia Marley, I don't remember when I wrote it up because I was a little drunk at the time, but, um, and Forrest J. Ackerman in a uh, cameo role as one of the crewmen, and let's see if you can spot him in that film. Now, I've got a full synopsis of the film. I didn't have time to memorize it, so I hope you'll all bear with me if I, just in the interest of getting this shit right for a change, I'm going to read it to you right now. Okay? And, you know, it's like IMDb. Gotta love it, you know? When you care enough to steal the very best. Anyway, The Queen, Queen of Blood, starring Dennis Hopper, John Saxon, and... I'm sorry, it was Florence Marley, not Virginia or Victoria Marley. Where the hell did that come from? I have no clue. You know, Brother Jack seems to be having a squirrel moment. You know, and, you know that early onset Alzheimer's, what a bitch. You know, pretty soon I'll be sitting there in my comfy adult diapers, sitting in my own duty, uh, drooling on myself. And you know what? I've earned it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Frankly, that would be a vacation. But anyway... Here we go, the Queen of Blood. The year is 1990, and an alien spacecraft makes a contact with Earth through radio transmissions, notifying of an imminent visit. Well, at least they were nice, kind enough to let us know before they dropped in. Uh, alien ships crash land on Mars, and a rescue team is sent out from Earth. The plot thickens. Ooh. Eventually, a surviving female is located and brought to the human ship. The female is light green with an amazing hairdo. Uh, after some ex unsuccessful attempts by the crew to feed her, she is more or less left to herself. Ominous, isn't it? Yeah. I, I know, that's like, well, yeah, we're just going to leave the strange alien to her own devices on our ship, you know, that we need to survive to get home to Earth, you know. That's a great idea. Great forward thinking, guys. 
you know, <laughs> you must have all been telemarketing managers or call center managers or TLs at one time. Yeah, right. But anyway, um, while most of the crew sleeps, the alien female hypnotizes the astronaut on guard, and when the crew wakes, she is sleeping and the guard is dead. A brief examination shows that the alien ate his blood, the queen of blood, you know, hence the title of the movie. There is a lot of blood plasma on the ship, so they feed the alien using that supply. And when they're almost home, however, yet another crew member is eaten. A fight breaks out and the alien is accidentally killed before she can finish the third guy. Now the ship lands on Earth, finally. But there is also more trouble. The two remaining astronauts find a lot of eggs when they're about to leave the ship. And obviously the alien is kind of a bee queen whose sole purpose is to spread their species to Earth, where there's a lot of yummy food. Uh, one of the astronauts tries to warn the surviving scientists of this danger, but they couldn't care less. Being scientists, they know what they're doing, so they collect the eggs and run happily along. The astronaut, using the phrase of famous last words, sums it up with the phrase, Well, I tried, and pretty much that's where the movie ends. You know, it's like, we all know how this one turned out. Every soon, everybody had green skin. So I'll be able to pass. The rest of you all are toast. You know, unless you're a certain red, other green-skinned, red-headed hack that I know of. Him, I'm thinking out. You know, it's like, he ain't one of us. <laughs> you know, like the, uh, you know, in the uh, Invasion of the Body Statures, you know, <laughs> That kind of shit, you know. Suck on that, you hack. But anyway, um, well, that's, uh, you know, that's the uh, plot of the movie. You know, we'll give you a little trivia here. Now, this was a, this movie was a very, very low budget film. I mean, they didn't even, the toilets didn't even flush on this production. I mean, they had a little Mexican guy running around with a plunger going, Ay, caramba, I want to gear, I want to gear. You know, you damn gringos, you know, why don't you eat some fiber once in a while? Why am I going to do this shit? Um, anyway, you know, the uh, the production was a very low budget. You know, just, that's putting it mildly. That's being kind. You know, P.O.S. would have been my next sentence. But anyway, the uh, film, because of the fact that the budget was so poor, they didn't have a really good special effects budget to make their own special effects. So what did they do? Being like any other low-budget film company, they stole shit. They stole everything from everybody. We got stock footage in here from a Russian science fiction film, you know. Um, and I, you know, I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to try and pronounce this. My Russian kind of sucks, so bear with me. And if you, anybody from the Ukraine wants to take offense with this, you know, all I can say is, up yours, comrade. We ain't forgotten Afghanistan, mind you. You know, uh, we're watching you. We're watching you. Yeah, right, you know. Ukrainian women. Are they a joke or did God do that to us on purpose? I don't know. But anyway, the, um, the big budget Soviet productions that a lot of this stuff was stolen from was Machete Navishkru from 1963 and Nebo Zavyot from 1960. You know, so, again, if you know anything about any of those movies, write us here at the show and tell us what the fuck we were talking about. Anyway, and even some of the, the music in this film was stolen from the 1959 classic Forbidden Planet, starring Leslie Nielsen, uh, Ann Baxter, and Walter Pigeon, and Robbie the Robot. Let's not forget Robbie. You know, it's like... Anyway, um, some of the music, you'll recognize some of the music in this from, from that movie, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, you know, so basically here, that, you know, we're not going to get, you know, we've pretty much told you the whole damn plot of the film, but we're going to let you experience it firsthand, you know. It's like, I could tell you about a big train wreck, but you're still going to want to watch it, trust me. Um, so we're going to get to the movie, The Queen of Blood, starring John Saxon, Dennis Hopper, Florence Marley, and Forrest J. Ackerman here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shockorama. So let's go see what this turkey's all about. Enjoy. Enjoy. 
queen of blood. A tantalizing, mystifying enigma. We have a good supply of blood plasma with us. We'll use that to feed her. And if we run out of plasma, Commander? followers welcome back what did you think of uh, what do you think of Queen of Blood so far I mean isn't this movie just kind of trippy I mean yeah let's face it the alien queen is hot she looks like she's got a nice rack on her and she's got a nice body and you know the the hair I mean it's like come on how much freaking Aquanet they must have had to ship the Aquanet hairspray in by the 55 gallon drum to keep that do up I mean and don't get her around any open flame you know it's like poof she comes out looking like Billy Eckstein or something, you know, looking like Ving Rammies or something, you know, just poof, flash of light and her head's fucking gone, burned off, baby, burned off, looks like a fucking matchstick, anyway, the, um, the, the film, you know, to give you a little more trivia about the film, Again, a lot of the special effects were stolen from big-budget Soviet productions. That's almost an oxymoron. That's like saying, you know, uh, military intelligence, conservative thinking, black unity, you know. It's all, all oxymoron. Big-budget Soviet production, nah, didn't exist. The words don't even go together. It's like I could barely even get them out of my mouth without choking on them. You know, that's like, I don't know what, you know, it's like, British dental hygiene, something like that, doesn't go together at all. But anyway, um, now the uh, to give you a little more trivia about the film here, Florence Marley uh, actually did a lot of films in her. She's not Russian, by the way. She's Czech, Czechoslovakian, and she was actually quite a prolific little actress in uh, her own country of Czechoslo uh, Czechoslovakia. She uh, did a lot of. She was actually a professional dancer. She had some composing experience, some the a lot of theater experience, even some singing experience, and she uh, wrote a lot of songs. Um, she, in 1973, she wrote uh, the score for a movie called Space Boy. Uh, we'll have to look into that and see what that's all about, but she actually composed it, scored it, wrote it, and directed the uh, orchestra that played it when it was done for the film. So, I mean, you know, quite a prolific little, little talent there. Um, she was, however, uh, detained in Chile in the early, the late 50s to early 60s because it was rumored that during the Second World War in Prague, she was, um, you know, the end, towards the end of the Second World War into the early 50s, she was actually a communist and a high-ranking individual in the Communist Party in Prague and was rumored you know, rumored, mind you, you know, to be involved with several political, uh, some political uh, situations, almost, you could say, some war crimes or even atrocities uh, con con committed against the people of Prague, and she was linked to it, if not actually having performed it, you know, so, again, that's the rumor, I'm neither confirming or denying it, I'm just... Uh, you know, this is what I found on IMDb people and other sources, so I'm just repeating it, you know. Um, you know, let's just keep that shit rolling right along. Anyway, uh, Dennis Hopper, you know, obviously if, if you know anything about films at all, Dennis Hopper is a name I don't even you need to, uh, to say anything about. I mean, you say Dennis Hopper, what's the first thing you think of? Easy Rider. You think of that. You think of 
Blue Velvet. Uh, you think of, you know, the um, the all the films with Canoe Reeves and Sandra Bullock uh, with the bus, you know, and all that shit. Uh, you think of the movie Space Trucker. I mean, it doesn't matter if you know he does a crappy film, you're going to remember it because he does it so well. I mean, he puts a polish on a turd like nobody's business. I mean, you could read by that fucker, you know, it's so shiny. But anyway, and this movie certainly comes under that heading, turd. You know, it's like, big one. You know, it's a big Cleveland steamer, people. You know, but eh, it is what it is. Now, Dennis Hopper uh, actually did this film because he needed to purchase a new car. And after he did the film and was paid, he did get the car he wanted. I believe it was like uh, a convertible or a sports car or something that, you know, young do young hip dudes drive these days. I don't know. Um, but you know, being interviewed several years later, I think in like the early 80s about this movie, uh, Hopper said if he'd known what a piece of shit this movie was, after he bought the car, he would have driven it over a cliff with himself still inside it rather than <laughs> done the movie. But, you know, and, and John Saxon, who was also interviewed uh, about this movie, actually threatened to knock out the interviewer's teeth if he mentioned anything more about it because apparently Saxon pretty much loathed this movie. I mean, he hated it. He hated the production team, he hated the writers, he hated the story, he hated a lot of his fellow actors, although him and Hoffman were, or Hopper were very good friends, and he, um, you know, he, he didn't really have anything to do with the lesser actors. He just felt this movie insulted his abilities as an actor and artist, you know, um, because there were, I mean, it's like there were a lot of, uh, when you want to sit and, I mean, all of my nerd friends can sit and analyze this movie, and I'm sure we can come up with a lot of shit, you know. Okay, first off, how the hell does, you know, it's like, I'm sorry, how the hell does this alien queen lay all these eggs, you know, and still keep that perfect girlish figure? I mean, it's like, you know, when, and what's she going to be shooting him out of? It's like, she'd be in there squatting and grunting and groaning like she just had Taco Bell in Tijuana or something. It's like, you know, trying to pass that. <laughs> You're going to need some serious fiber to move that shit out, lady. But anyway, um, so John Saxon did not like the movie. He didn't like the writers. He had issues with the director. He had issues with pretty much everyone involved with this film. Um... Forrest Ackerman, who you would know as Uncle Forey, possibly one of the greatest experts on horror memorabilia and the horror genre in general, uh, all the way to classics, the Universal Monsters, Dracula, Frankenstein, yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, being considered one of the great, the guru, one of the great gurus of this genre and an elder statesman for the horror genre. I mean, had a small bit part playing a crewman in this film, just as, you know, he was given... He was friends with the director and they said, hey, you want to be in the movie? And he said, sure, why not? You know, um, he did it as a yuck. But that's a, you know, Forrest Ackerman, from what I understand, was famous for that. He, you know, would just, like Hitchcock, he would just show up in a movie just to say, hey, look at me. And, you know, you know, be uh, in a two second scene and never be seen again. He didn't care. You know, he had other things and he just loved these movies for the sake of that they were horror movies that they were part of the genre, and that's what he loved. Enough said there. So, with that all being said, we're going to get back to the film Queen of Blood here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Chakorama. Enjoy. For you out there Don't cross the parallel of time and space Or you'll die of love in her cruel embrace The Lana is the queen who takes the gold The Lana, the lover, sex without soul Home, space gold, space gold Oh, I'm 
face on his gallant crest But there in ambush behind heaven's gate Mysterious villain I was lying in wait Spellbound he looked into her blazing green eyes She smiled and stirred her enticing thighs His love with tender caress Fireballs and sunburst shower them delights And the two lovers held the sacred rite Her kisses were deadly, the cosmic night grew dark She tightened her green arms around his heart A sort of sorrow echoed to the sky He sighed, I love you, and he died Stars, but legend says wherever you are, you can hear on certain nights a young man's calling from the heights. Belana, Belana, come back to me, my love. Belana, Belana, oh, Belana. followers welcome back what did you think of queen of blood so far wasn't this movie scary yeah. okay i mean yeah, i had a few moments in it you know personally i would have wanted to see how that queen laid all those eggs i mean i want to know what orifice or what hole she was shooting them puppies out of because those look like some pretty big eggs to me you know it's like I know a woman can push a baby it's like a woman can push a bowling ball through her nostril when you want to Compare it to the analogy of giving birth, and that's pretty much what happens. Um, you know, we also want to give a big shout out while I'm thinking about this to a good friend of the show's, Aaron Keckler, on the uh, birth of her, uh, on the birth of her daughter uh, recently. Congratulations! Um, seen the picture on Facebook. She's adorable, and you know, mother and daughter are doing quite well, and I guess the dad is quite thrilled too. So, you know, congratulations to all of them. And, you know, if you see him on Facebook, it's Aaron Keckler, K-E-C-K-L-E-R. Be sure to say hi, and uh, Brother Jack sent you. You know, so congratulations, you'll make a great mom. Anyway, now, on back to the, back to the uh, business at hand here. Um, you know, this movie, yes, it was no, it's not Star Wars, people. I mean, it's, it's a great B low budget sci-fi slash horror slash vampire film had a lot of a uh, couple of well-known actors in it who early on in their career I mean let's face it everybody's had that phrase well everybody has used that phrase that at the time it seemed like a good idea or I did it for the money I needed the money you know yada 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 it's like so they work real hard in their later part of their career so they can distance themselves from that shit and never talk about it again or threaten to punch your teeth, you in the teeth if you say anything. But that's okay, that's what actors do. You know, God love them. Except if you're the Kardashians, then fuck off. You know, bunch of goddamn media whores. Anyway, I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> Boy, I keep having these senior moments more and more, you know. It's like, like I said, pretty soon old brother Jack's going to be wearing a pair of adult diapers and sitting in a wheelchair eating cream of wheat and drooling on myself, you know? But anyway, that's, you know, that's my little hell, and don't, don't, don't drag me into yours, I won't drag you into mine, okay? Fair enough. The film, you know, uh, had its ups and downs. Then, uh, there was a, you know, the, the plot wasn't bad, it was reasonably well maintained. Um, you know, it was reasonably coherent, and you know, at the ending of the film, you know, you get these 
they get the crew, they've seen all this weird shit, they come back and they warn these scientists, totally oblivious. You know, all they want to know is they want to analyze this shit. You know, it's like, ooh, let's unleash these eggs on the fucking planet and see what happens. You know, this is what happens when you get too many eggheads in a room. You're bound, you're asking for a disaster. You know, science, eh, it's overrated. You know, I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I love science and technology. I couldn't do this show if it wasn't for science and technology. You know, but sometimes we do go too far with shit, and Brother Jack's biggest worry is that we're going to go further yet and really F ourselves up. But, you know, it's like, if they, rather than th coming up with some type of disease that could wipe out everything above a cockroach on this planet, why don't you, you know, come up with a, you know, come up with a way to cure cancer. Come up with a way to cure Alzheimer's. Come up with a, uh, you know, a pill that's going to give you, you know, eight hours of wood without having to take a trip to the emergency room. Why don't you try those problems, guys, instead of, oh yeah, let's make this strain of anthrax even more fucking deadly than what it is. Ooh, yeah. You don't know why? Because there's no profit in it, people. You know, it's like, you know, let's come up with all these cancer cures that don't work or make you sicker or can cause more problems and side effects. You know, let's everybody just, you know, here's a good cure for cancer, people. Weed. You know, trust me, it works. There's, believe me, there's tons of evidence to prove it. You know, um, normal, uh, the national marijuana, national Nebraska, the Nebraska Marijuana Party and normal um, national organization to reform marijuana laws. Finally got that right. Um, they're all having uh, rallies here. And go to one. Sign a petition. If you believe about this stuff, get it on the ballot. Contact your senators. Well, that's... Okay, Brother Jack's going to get down on the, off his soapbox now. Um, remember, people, um, this movie... Yeah, it was not bad. I would have suggested a little more skin, you know, a little more nudity, you know. It's like we got some pretty attractive actresses on this thing. Let's put them to use, you know. It's like, let them puppies out, you know. It's like, should have put the alien queen in a low-cut top or a little, like, space bikini or some shit like that, you know. You know, I mean, we, we all we all love Inferna and Torrid, you know, and they're not dressed as, they're not dressed as a, uh, uh, nuns on this show, you know, it's like they're not wearing burkas, we have them wearing what they're wearing for a reason, because you the fans asked us to, nay, you told us to, and you like what you see, believe me. Well, next week we're going to be bringing you another, you know, dose of celluloid badness from the movie vaults here at the Monastery of Mayhem. More grade B and grade Z movie madness here on Movie Night Live from the Monastery of Mayhem here with the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. I'm Brother Jack Angry. And remember, friends, let's keep America on top. Watch horror host y'all. Good night and unpleasant dreams. <laughs>